By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Raging Bull series, the old school magic, the gathering tournament held in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And in this round number four, we have Kuhn with his super strong Dead Guy Ale on steroids deck. And he is taking on Chris and Chris is playing black and red midrange. It is a beautiful deck as well. Now, before I dive into the deck tech section of this video, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, maybe check out the deck techs later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the game action. And in that same description, you can find more information about the tournaments, the rules, and all that kind of stuff. And there's also a little tiny link to my Patreon page. And I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to check out patreon.com slash timmytalks after this video, or, you know, maybe right now before you check out the rest of the video to find out how you can become a sponsor of the show. Because just for $1 a month, you can become a sponsor of Timmy Talks and help me to continue making this content for you. So take a look on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, now that you're fully informed, we're going to start with the deck deck section. I'm going to start with the deck of Kuhn. Let's take a look at this Dead Guy Ale deck. And here we see the deck of Kuhn. So it's called Dead Guy Ale on steroids. Now Dead Guy Ale refers to playing with a black and a white deck. So a combination of those two colors. And the steroids part refers to the three power cards and the brain geyser. And in this uh, case, there's a new steroid in town, which is Wheel of Fortune. So first check out those power cards. Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, Time Twister. I mean, those cards are splashed in a lot of decks for a simple reason. They're super good and make most decks even better, right? I mean, an Ancestral Recall, Time Walk... What deck wouldn't want to play those? And they're easy to splash because they only have one blue in their casting cost. Same thing goes for Time Twister. Uh, Brain Geyser, a little bit harder, right? The Sorcery, two blue and X. But of course, it allows you to draw cards. The, the card is simply so good. And what I like about Brain Geyser in this deck is that you can also use it as a finisher to kill your opponent. You can make something that's called the Blue Fireball because you're also playing with Underworld Dreams. So Underworld Dreams and Enchantment for three black from Legends that says every time your opponent draws a card, he or she takes a damage. So with your Brain Geyser, you can force your opponent to draw cards and they take a damage every time they do so. So, I mean, when he's low enough, of course, in most situations, you're just going to use the Brain Geyser for yourself. But I just wanted to, you know, to let you know this, that it, it could be a way to finish an opponent off. And I find it a really classy and fun way to do so. Um, talking about taking damage from the Underworld Dreams, he is also playing with one red card, and that is the Wheel of Fortune. I think it's a very good decision to play it in this deck because he's got the Black Lotus, he's got the Mox Ruby, he's got four City of Brasses. So, I mean, he, he, can get, he can get to the red mana, I think, with this. And it's just really good because, you know, uh, Wheel of Fortune, discard your hand, draw seven new cards, your opponent does the same thing. That means that if you've got one Underworld Dreams on the table, your opponent takes seven damage because you're going to draw seven new cards. If you have two Underworld Dreams on the table, you take 14 damage, right? So Wheel of Fortune in a deck with Underworld Dreams is just really good. And remember, he's also playing with Demonic Tutor, so he's got two chances of finding that card right out of his deck. So that's really good. And then of course you still have Time Twister as well. You've got the Brain Geyser. So, I mean, this is just, just really, really good. Now, besides these cards, the base of the deck is very solid, right? He's got a lot of uh, answers to problems. He's got Disenchant, he's got Swords to Plowshares, he's got Balance, he's got, uh, of course, the Sinkholes as well, you know, to deal with those special lands. So he's got a lot of answers and he's got a lot of threats. Check out that creature base, Four Juzam Jins, five five powerhouse for four mana. What's not to love, man? This is dangerous. A lot of people they keep saying that you know sitting in a bottle is too good of a card, and I I agree. I think it could have designed better. I think we all agree upon that. But on the other hand, we keep seeing these powerful Arabian Nights creatures finding their way into the top of tournaments, right? So Randip Afrit and also the Juzam Jin. There are a lot of Juzam Jin decks at this tournament, which I love because I love the card. Uh, but on one side, it also surprises me because Maze is unbanned, City in the Bottle is a thing now. So, But it turns out it's just such a good card, you still play it. And of course, it's a love for this card as well. I'm sure that contributes also. Anyway, a very strong deck, Dead Guy Ill on steroids, a super deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of the opponent. And here we see the deck of Chris. So it's black and red. It's kind of mid-range. 
Um, and it's a bit of an odd deck photo, right? If you look at it, it, the deck looks quite small because it looks like he's only playing with one Juzam, one Hypnotic Spectre, one Dark Ritual, one Sinkhole, one Bolt, one Suchi, I think. But we'll have to find out when, while we see the deck in action that he's actually playing with a playset of Juzam, playset of Suchi, playset of Bolt, playset of Rituals, playset of Hypnotic Spectres, playset of Sinkholes. That's what I expect, right? Um, this is just your really classic black and red deck. It's looking very solid. I think it's going to be a tough matchup though for Chris because the dead guy ill deck is very solid as well, but then has the power on top of that. Uh, but it could uh, become a very fun match. If he can find like those rituals, put on some early pressure and his opponent cannot find like, for example, the storage to plowshares. I mean, it could uh, become a very interesting match. I also really like the Nevenerals disc here in the main, you know, the main 60. I think the disc can be really good in this matchup. And I think the second Nevenerals disc is probably coming in after sideboarding. So yeah, it's an, it's a solid deck. It's looking good. That's all that I can say about this. So uh, beautiful deck, Chris. Thank you for bringing it to the tournament. Now let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So on the right, we have Kuhn. He is on the play. He's playing Dead Guy Ill on steroids. So that means he's playing mainly black and white, but he has a blue power splash. And he's also playing with one Wheel of Fortune. That's why the Dad Lance is in there. And he's playing against Chris. And Chris is playing black and red mid range. Let's see what he can do. Starting with a mountain, tapping it here. Ooh, there's a Mana Vault. Interesting. He is playing with Jews and Jins, also with Sengir Vampires, I believe. So perhaps that Mana Vault can help him to cast that early. There we see a Scrubland, a tap for three. What are we gonna get? Hypnotic Spectre hitting the board. Both players playing with a full playset of Hypnotic Spectres. Now Chris does play with Lightning Bolts, so perhaps he's able to bolt the Hippie out of the eye. Let's see if he can do that. There's a Badlands. I mean, if he's got a Bolt, he doesn't have to use it yet, right? He can wait until Kuhn declares his attack. Let's see if he can do something. And, oh, that's uh, a Dark Ritual, I guess, playing out a Hypnotic Spectre and, a, and uh, afterwards playing out a Suchi as well. It was kind of hard to see, but that's a, a Dark Ritual there. So use that to cast that Hypnotic Spectre. This is a bit risky. If Kuhn has a Swords, for example, for the Hippie, then uh, Chris is going to lose a card here. Let's see if he has that answer. There's the attack offering a trade here. And the trade is taken, so both players here losing a Hippie. That seems fair. Will the Suchi stick? That's a big question. There's a Mistress Factory Bakun. It's gonna tap four as well. There's a Juzam Jin. Juzam is bigger than Suchi. It's a 5-5. Card from Arabian Nights and during your upkeep it deals one damage to the controller. So that's Kun of course in this case. But there's the attack. So does this mean there's the block that he's got a bolt? So killing it, but it is a two for one though. Interesting choice, I think. Again, I don't know what else Chris has in hand, but I think I would have waited and just let Kun then maybe attack, you know, take five, and then you can hit him back with the Suchi. And of course, with that bolt in hand to take care of a potential Mishra's Factory activation. Again, that's what I would have done. It does mean, of course, that you take five damage, which is, which is a big chunk of change. Another thing you can do, of course, is when Kun attacks with the Juzam, you can choose to double block it. Uh, which is a bit risky. Anyway, uh, Kuhn here animating the factory, attacking here with the 2-2. No animation here from Chris, so he is taking the 2 damage, dropping to 17. There's an Hypnotic Spectre and Kuhn taking a damage here from the City of Brass, dropping to 19. And of course, Chris also taking damage here from the Mana Vault, right? Every turn it stays tapped, you take a damage. And this is already quite tough for... Uh, for Chris here, he is attacking for two. So putting Kuhn here on 17. Let's hope for Chris that he's got a bolt here for this Hypnotic Spectre. There is a strip mine here, stripping the Manland. The Mistress Factory is gone. There's the attack for two. And Kuhn here not animating the Factory. That surprises me a little. Perhaps he's got a four drop. Is there another Juzam coming? Oh, another Juzam. Oh, this is very painful. Kuhn, by the way, uh, losing his strip mine here to the Hypnotic Spectre. He's on 13 after taking the damage from the Vault. Tapping three. Okay, at least the Hypnotic Spectre to stop the Hypnotic Spectre of Kuhn. At least that's something. But now he's got another Juzam to deal with. 
That is really tough for him. Yeah, and Juzep's really hard to answer for Chris. I mean, he's got terrors in the sideboard, but that's not going to do it. So I guess the best solution for this is the Nevenerals Disc, or of course the Mazes of If from the sideboard. So blocking your Hypnotic Spectre, trading it away, taking five more damage, dropping to eight. Let's see what else he can do. Are we going to see another big creature hitting the board here for Kuhn? Tapping three, so he is going to take a damage drop to 15. Does he have perhaps a draw seven or maybe... There's an Underworld Dreams oh, to make matters even worse. So now Chris takes double damage and from the Vault. And because he's going to draw a card from the Dreams. So that is pretty brutal. I mean, he is as good as dead, though. There's a Dark Ritual and a Suchi. I mean, you do what you can to survive, but it's not looking good for Chris. And that's an understatement here. So expecting an attack here. He can attack with double animating the factory. I think that's what I would have done. Because, of course, Chris can then block the factory, kill it, but then he would take five, go to one. Well, he's dead now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> not even not even caring to block is like I'm toast you know and and I agree because you had the mana vault and you had the dreams there was nothing really you could do uh, anyway this was a very a one-sided game one but now both players are going to uh, um, go into their sideboards and maybe then we'll get a more equal game in game number two so let's go to game number two game number two here we go and now it's Chris on the play so that can make a difference no Dark Ritual, though. I was kind of hoping for Dark Ritual Hippie turn one. I mean, that can be so sweet if your opponent doesn't have an answer. Let's see what Kuhn can do here at turn one. Looks like he's got a lot of options. In the tank here. Starting with an Underground Sea. There's a Mox Jet. Tapping both. Ooh, Sinkhole. That is brutal, right? Because you're ramping up with your mocks and you're, you're slowing down your opponent with a sinkhole. So that means that Kuhn is kind of taking the initiative with that uh, play. Tapping three here with the City of Brass. Are we going to see an Underworld Dreams? No, an Hypnotic Spectre. Hopefully for Chris, he can find a bolt there. I don't think I see a bolt, though. There's not even a red source. There is a factory. I do believe I saw... A fireball there but this is not looking great for Chris because now he's gonna take two and more importantly he's gonna lose a card drop to 18 he's got to discard one of his cards let's see which one. Oh, the Juzam that's too bad that's not fair Kun you had all sorts of Juzams in game one you gotta you gotta give Chris the chance is he now gonna cast a Juzam looks like he's not just tapping to oh man time walk Time walk is so good right now and so painful for Chris because it means you have another attack with the Hypnotic Spectre. You're going to lose another card. Oh, man. This is really bad. Losing the Hammerheim. Hopefully, he's got another red source in hand because I believe I saw a Fireball there. So that means he can play a red source Fireball if not Spectre. Oh, another Sinkhole. That will be super brutal if there's another sinkhole coming right now. Okay, tapping four instead. <laughs> oh, oh, Juzam Jin. Oh, God. I mean, if you're Chris, you're like, what can I do against this? This is just ridiculous. And to be honest, there's not much you can do. Let's see if you've got that Fireball now. At least, at least Fireball, if not Expector, right? If you have it. And yes, then you still take five from the Juzam. But, um, okay, Mind Twist. I mean, it's a good card, but... You're so far behind right now. Okay, so that's good. Taking care of the demonic. That's something. And of course, the disenchant, which can be an answer to your to your man land. But you're still in big trouble here. Kuhn dropping to 16 after taking a damage from his own Jews. I'm attacking here for 7, putting Chris on 9. I mean, there are not a lot of decks that can take this, this brutality here that Kuhn is displaying in this uh, round number four match. This is just brutal. Taking care there of the uh, Hypnotic Spectre, that would have been a great blocker for Chris for the Hippie. But of course, he misses that double black. Remember that sinkhole in turn one for Kuhn? I mean, that was uh, pretty important. That kind of set the tone for this game number two. Okay, there's that Fireball taking care of the Hypnotic Spectre. 
I mean, Chris is doing whatever he can do, but it's just too much because now he can take seven, right? Because Kun can animate the factory. Right? Yeah, I would do it. I mean, and then if you're Chris, you gotta ask yourself, am I gonna strip? Yeah, okay, you're gonna strip. And now you take five, gonna drop to four. That means you're on a one turn clock. Of course, you can jump block with the factory. You don't wanna do that, but maybe you have to. I mean, this is bad, bad, bad. Remember, Chris has to win this. I mean, he's one game behind already, but I don't think it's gonna happen. There's the attack, animating, trying to stay alive. There's the pass. Can he find anything? Okay, Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, so I mean, I can appreciate this, trying to do whatever you can. There's the swords going to six. Doesn't mean another turn. Hey, every turn is one. You gotta, you gotta do what you can do, right? You gotta try to survive. Remember, the decisive game, round number four. Both players can still make it into top eight. There's the attack. Dropping here to one. Oh, this is why, yeah, exactly, losing here. And what I wanted to say is this is why I enjoy playing with white. Well, not all the time, but what I like about it is that you always have that chance of top decking a balance and kind of turning the game around, even if you're way behind, right? Like now, like you've got no hand no creatures then balance gets even better because even if chris would have found uh you know an evanero's disc it wouldn't have helped him much right because the disc comes into play tapped it's just too slow you know kun's playing with white's got the disenchants and stuff anyway this was uh brutal and this was also i think a lot of bad luck here for chris i mean that game two kun just went so quick found everything that he wanted to find but uh Wow, this deck uh, is looking very, very impressive. Anyway, uh, this was a joy uh, here to look at again at round number four. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing of this tournament, the Raging Bull series, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a subscriber, please consider sharing this on your socials, commenting on this video and liking it. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's, not a, uh, then there's a last thing that you can do. And I've already mentioned that at the start of this video and that is consider becoming a patron of the show. As a patron, you become a sponsor. You help me to continue creating this old school Magic the Gathering content. So if you like my channel, please consider becoming a patron via patreon.com slash timmytalks. Have a look, you can already become a patron for $1 a month. And for that, you do get something in return. And one of those things is that you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Somebody can see.